platforms. Hello, I'm Claire Cooley. This is the Creativity Show. This is all about creativity. I'm wearing the outfit I made yesterday, the chrysanthemum uh, stencil that my son Bodhi, the movie maker, his YouTube channel, mine is the Creativity Show. Uh, he's making them into SVGs so you can print them out, cut them on your Cricut cutter. You can print them any size and uh, use them on clothes, walls, cards. And I have many videos on the Creativity Show about how to use the stencils and ideas on where to use the stencils from gift bags to freezes, platters, you name it. Many, many things I've done with stencils and that's why I wanted to uh, bring them out to you to use my designs and use your creativity to make gifts or decorate your home or outfits, art to wear. So that's um, why during these 15 live streams about finding our passion and promoting it. Um, I'm just using this opportunity to show another aspect of creativity, the stenciling and its uses. And, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I've got a little frog in my throat this morning, so um, you will forgive me for that. And I will move on to what these 15 live streams on promoting our passion. Um, I got this, uh, this grant uh, from the Minnesota State Arts Board and the National Endowment for the Arts based on my memoir, Incandescence, Rising Above Darkness, with more than 52 stories and more than 60 pieces of my art. In between each story, um, I have the art because creating is uh, the way I rose above my adversity and, as I like to say, turned the um, disadvantage into advantage by making it into art. And the healing, life-enhancing, restorative, expressing our feelings through creativity uh, is what I believe in and what I love to share with you. So today we're going to specifically talk about, this is um, live stream number 13, and how to keep going until you complete a project is what today number 13 live stream there'll be two more on this subject and then i'm going to move right into fun fast frugal fabulous holiday decor i love to use things that other people donate i find get at used stores um, to make into creative beautiful home decor so we're going to start that after two more of these episodes, uh, live streams. I like to think of them as virtual visits. I feel connected to you uh, and I love that. Um, easy on the environment way to connect with one another. We don't have to drive or fly and we can reach, well, anybody in the world. After these live streams are done, they go up on the Creativity Show so you or a friend or a community that you want to share this with can see them anytime and rewatch them if you want to. So there are many things from restoring this grand old home called Polishing the Emerald Lady to turning our over 100 year old carriage house into a studio. Those videos and uh, so much more on the subject of creativity Bodhi's are uh, mostly about technology and his uh, 100, over 100,000 word novel, his sci-fi thriller, horror genre uh, novel called Northport 1999 and his Patreon members who get the whole book. So his, his Bodhi the Movie Maker channel has his 
technology, movie making, uh, Unreal Engine, animation, um, and the process of turning an idea into all of that, including scripts and treatments um, to submit to Catalyst, the largest uh, episodic film festival in the world that, that selected both our books as literary pieces and his scripts and, and pitches for episodic series. So all of that, um, hopefully we will be attending in person next year, are up for awards. They've all been selected. So you can check that out. But we're going to get to what I've learned over the years about um, how to keep going until we finish. Uh, that's not easy. And I like to say that the reason they call it art work is because art is the inspiration and then it's work. Um, and it takes both to complete something. And the only way we can feel satisfied, um, that, that enormous sense of satisfaction we get by completing something is to get it finished. So how do we keep going to get to that? And the only way we can share it is if we finish it, um, or the best way to share it is that we finish it. And that in that great uh, fulfillment um, that we get for from sharing it with others and moving others with our work, it has to come uh, from bringing it out to the world and letting them see it. And so, how do we um, get there? How do we keep going until it's done? Um. I myself carefully choose what I begin and then I commit to complete. So if I begin it, I have made an agreement with myself that I'm going to finish it. And as a multimedia artist, um, when I fell in love with drawing, I said to myself, well, if you are gonna do this, uh, if you're going to pursue this as work in the world, as a career, as a way to make an income, contribute your vision and your aesthetic to the world, then you're going to have to be committed. So I drew every day for five years when I fell in love with drawings, when this gorilla looked back at me from a pencil drawing I did. And I said to myself, if you start a piece of art, you have to finish it. I've seen many brilliant, worthy, creatives, artists of all sorts, writers, painters, uh, movie makers, all sorts of people that start something and then that doubt and inner critic um, comes up and they stop before they get to complete. And that can happen to any of us, and it will happen um, that we will have doubts. We're human. We all have doubts. And so how do we, how do we keep going? And uh, even though we have doubts and fears that it'll ever be good enough, that other people will ever appreciate it. And how I deal with that is to remember why I chose it in the first place. And... I chose to write my memoir because telling my stories, people told me help them and it, they would help others in their dealing with their uh, darkness they had to rise above. So I, okay, if I'm writing these stories and I'm going to put it out there to help other people, it can't help other people unless I finish it and put something out there in the world that they can read. Um, so the, that is the why I wrote them. And then what I get out of it besides healing 
the difficulties by speaking of it, by accepting it, by processing it into strength. Um, I like to call it post-traumatic strength instead of stress. Uh, that comes from processing it, feeling it, letting the pain go. And we can't let the pain go unless we accept it in the first place. And so writing is an excellent way, and sometimes it's enough to just have it be a personal healing process. But if we get to the point where we're, we have healed it, uh, I um, love a story reading when the professor at Sonoma State asked me to read for her master's degree autobiography class. And I read a story, trigger warning here, um, in case there's little people listening, um, of being sexually molested at 16. And I read that story for this class and the young lady in the class asked me, how can you read that without crying? And I said, well, I don't share what I haven't healed yet publicly. Um, and I don't want to run my makeup. And so right after hearing this very difficult story, um, the class laughed and, and that, it's an enormously wonderful feeling to know we can go through the toughest stuff and get through it. And we can be an example to others. Um, and we've all had tough stuff, you know, different, in different ways, we've all dealt with disappointment. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of abuse in the world. So most uh, often I find I've heard a lot more than most people here because I'm open and I share. And so people feel safe to tell me things that I never repeat anyone else's stories. They're my stories that I tell um, and I get to because they're mine, but I don't betray that sacred confidence of telling me what other people have told me they've been through. And often they say they'd, they've never told anyone else because there's a lot of shame around being a victim, which is um, outrageous to me. And I refuse to participate in that kind of confusion. It is not the victim that, that should be ashamed that they were victimized. The victimizer should accept responsibility for the hurt they've caused and try to make amends amends and then, you know, work on being, uh, you know, someone that can be forgiven and trusted again. But if they can't do that, at least work on forgiving themselves, understanding why they would do it. Um, that's their journey. But the victim shaming that happens in our culture is often by victimizers who, of course, don't want to be held accountable for what they've done um, so I say, be honest, uh, at first with those, you know, you can trust definitely with yourself and, and rise above any sense of embarrassment, shame, um, feeling less than because it happened. It's not, you did nothing wrong to have been a victim is, um, not your fault. It's not your responsibility, but healing it, no one else is going to do for us. So I love, I love sharing that and hopefully um, helping people because I'm willing to share it and speak about, uh, you know, be proud of yourself, what you did with the hard stuff. The harder it is, if we rise above it, the more inspirational we are. So don't regret you've ha got hard stuff to rise above. Just do your best and keep working at it to rise above it and then share that and, and, and be that virtuous kind of pride that you have not resorted to hate or bitterness. So remember why you're sharing what you're sharing. And if it's not your own story, um, if it's 
other stories, history, science, whatever it is you want to write about, um, do it because it moves you, because it, it fulfills, nurtures your enthusiasm in life, your curiosity. It is inspiring to you and step into the flow when you commit to complete and you just um, get to it until you get through it every day or a reasonable uh, schedule, you step into that creative flow. It is medically documented that it helps our happiness. So just choosing a project because it inspires you or is you're curious about it or because you have something other people have told you help them or information, knowledge, experience, stories, whether you make them up or they're real, if it helps others and it fulfills you by helping others and you step into the flow to do it every day or on a reasonable schedule, whatever your life allows, you're increasing your own happiness and expressing emotions, doing it, um, stimulates our immune system. So we're increasing our health. So that's the, those are the reasons to keep going until it's done. And then, um, is it, uh, I've, I'm uh, having trouble remembering the name. Maybe Bodhi will come on and help me with this. I think it's Norman Lear who said, uh, over and next. And he's made more television shows than anyone else. And I love that when I heard that, over and next. And it is a policy I have of um, thinking about what my next project is or even beginning it before I finish the one I'm on so that there's no uh, fall into the pit of I'm not sure what I'm doing now and doubts will fill that pit if you if you allow yourself to fall into it. So before I'm even totally done with one project, I know what the next one is going to be. And most of the time I have just tiptoed into it and begun it so I can go straight from done to next and not have to, um, you know, fall into the pit of despair that can happen with long creative projects. Celebrate it's over and then get excited about the next thing. Um, whatever we, we choose to work on, we're going to have doubts that it's the best thing we could have done for uh, with our time, but whatever we choose to work on, we are going to learn from, we're going to be expanded. So that's good. And, um, we can also choose, which is my life policy to have no regrets. So I, once I choose, I just go for it and, and, I don't allow that monkey mind, they call it, I think, in Buddhism, to get in there and mess with it and say, but I should have done this. I should have written about that. I should have started this series of paintings. I should have, should have, should have. No, this is what I'm doing, and I'm going to learn. I'm going to grow. I'm going to be strengthened, build my confidence. And because I'm committed to completing it, I'm also going to have something to share with others. And that is um, one of the greatest feelings in life. It is the karma of, uh, you know, I watched my mother who was just, um, she had just terrible asthma, asthma since infancy and had become drug dependent because they gave her such, such, um, powerful drugs, her own uh, systems had had shut off and, and she needed the drugs to be able to breathe. And so she was very, very physically challenged, but she was always happy. 
and always content. And even though if you looked at her life for kids on her own, alcoholic husband uh, who left and she worked in a factory with a fine art degree instead of doing her art, she had every excuse to be unhappy, but she wasn't because she chose to be kind and giving and selfless. And that filled her heart with joy, no matter how difficult her personal situation was. And um, my mother was an angel on earth and enlightened. And I, I am blessed to have had her spiritual teaching, quite frankly, and her cute sense of humor and all of that, her being a champion of my zany creativity. And I aspire to be more and more like her and I will never be as, as you know, as beautiful as she was, but that's okay. Um, I'm just lucky that I had such, uh, such a role model and, and I'm committed to ever becoming more like her. And, and she liked my spunkiness and uh, I get to be me too. And I get to emulate the parts of her that, um, that I can and, and that work for me and keep the parts of me that she didn't have and just you know be unique. My unique combination, every one of us is a human being made of the same parts in different, in different proportions. So, um, if something inspires us to write about or paint about or whatever we choose to do, um, it will, there will be others it inspires because we're all just human beings and we're very, you know, what we have in common is so much more important than our differences. And that's, we all want to feel safe, loved, valued, respected. Um, important. And so, you know, if, it, if you're enthusiastic, enthusiastic about the subject, others, there will be others that will also be enthusiastic about the subject. So, so always remember why you chose it. Uh, and that is the way to, when we fall out of positivity, which happens to all of us, um, to get back on the positive track is go back to the foundation, why you chose this project, this writing in the first place. Um, and remember that childlike curiosity that it sparks in you or the joy the subject engenders in you and, and go back there to get back on the positive track and, step over the landmines of doubt that are all over the field that you have to get through to, to get to the uh, ocean edge of um, the ocean of ideas and, and inspiration. Um, when I uh, think about people that have come to me over the years as a creativity coach, um, I had a woman that the day after I said at a dinner party, I'm a creativity consultant because I was living in California at the time. And I said, you can't get, make money as, you know, a, a coach really. I have to be a consultant to make money. And I was joking, but the next day I got a call from a woman whose husband had been the director of Esalen, world famous retreat center. And, she said, I, I think you're the one that can help me, Claire. Um, I know you are. And I've been to so many life coaches and blah, 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 um, workshops and seminars. And she came to me and started talking about book ideas. And um, by the end of the session, we had only 10 minutes left. I said, all right, now is the time to choose which one you're going to commit to complete. And she got annoyed at me I ha a bit because I was pressuring her, but I said, that's what you paid me for is to help you get this done, get this out. And so 
which one are you going to pick? You have 10 minutes before the end of the session. So my suggestion is you pick the one you're most inspired of these different projects, or you've worked the longest on, you get to pick or I will. So you pick and she did um, under pressure, but three sessions later, her book was laid out on the table and she did complete it. Um, and I asked her, how long have you been thinking about doing a book or knowing that you wanted to or should? And she said, 25 years. So sometimes we have to kick ourselves in the butt or let someone else that we trust has got our best interest at heart, give us the nudge we need to choose um, and then go for it. And don't let the doubt monkey mind get in there and talk us out of it. When we choose, choose to finish it. And you will not regret in um, having completed it, even if it's not something you want to share with others, even if it was your own learning, confidence building journey. Um, getting to the end is such a, a sense of satisfaction and uh, we, we feel a kind of pride that we faced our fears and did it. And it gives us great confidence in life to know that we can make a choice, stick with it, and just keep going until we complete it. That is great confidence building and honoring ourselves, respecting ourselves to stick with our choice. And even stepping up and making a choice um, is, is a showing faith in our own ability to reason and make a decision. Uh, and who we can trust with our process, even to help us make a selection of what to work on, book or art project or craft project or whatever we choose to put our time into, who we can trust with that process is very important to be careful with. Um, not everyone has a clear heart. A lot of people are angry and bitter and confused and fear-based and fear makes people myopic. Love expands our views. So be very careful during the selecting process and during the honing process. I think the last live stream was about how to choose someone or a few to help the project um, get more refined and better. And then, you know, to keep going until it's done and celebrate it um, is, it's very, very important to celebrate and appreciate yourself for having the, the, the courage and the, stamina to keep going. Um, but remember, you know, that you're doing it first for the sense of joy you get from creating the life enhancing healing, uh, and then the enormous satisfaction we get from helping others or inspiring others or informing others or even entertaining others, um, is, are all things we get out of it. The best cure for depression is to help others or another person. That's karma. There you go. So the people that suffer from the least depression are those that are doing things with their life that helps others. And boy, that's, that's some sweet karma right there. And the most depressed people I've known in my life, trust funders uh, uh, can fall into that category because they don't really have to even work, let alone help others. And they are trust funders because they were born into wealth. And so they often, know, you know, they know they didn't make that money. They didn't earn it. It do, doesn't build their confidence. They may not even believe they deserve it, but they're also afraid of not having it. So they can be the most miserly, the most 
not all trust funders are like this. I'm not saying that, but I've known a few that are, and they, um, they're scared, terrified of not having money because they've always had it. I chose in my late teens, early twenties to not touch money for a number of years there. I traded everything. I bartered everything. I did services, mending, cleaning, you know, teaching children, whatever, uh, for everything I needed um, because I thought money corrupted people and it can, but it doesn't have to. And I don't choose to spend that much of my time bartering everything I need. Um, it just makes life simpler to have, it's just currency. It is a form of energy that can flow through our lives, but to be afraid not to have it um, is, can be crippling. So we do our work for love if it's creative and if we make money at it, that's dessert. It's not the meal. The meal is the love and the inspiration and fulfillment we get from doing it, the healing we get, the confidence building. And if we make money, that's just a tasty dessert. Um, so how do we not allow doubt to thwart us? Keep going back to, I'm doing this, I'm choosing, I chose to do this. I'm choosing to do this for joy, for self-healing, for life enhancing, and hopefully it'll help others. So doubt, I don't need you. You have no place here. Go away and bother somebody else who will let you in. Uh, it's like a, you know, mean person knocking on your door. Just don't even answer it. Um, and the vanquishing writer's block. It is my opinion that if we have any time to explore our own artistic urges, our own creativity, we are a blessed and fortunate person. A lot of the world is just trying to figure out how to eat, how to keep a roof over them and maybe their children's heads, how to pay the car payments so they don't have it repossessed. A lot of the world does not have enough. And if so, if we have any time to write or paint or do any creative project, it is my opinion that it is um, kind of like float, throwing a tantrum to just sit there and stare at the blank paper. Just start writing. Don't even judge it. Just let yourself play like a child doesn't look at the toys and like, oh, which toy should I pick up? Which way should I move it? Which other toy should I have it interact with? They just begin without that doubt. It's never going to be good enough. Just explore your own imagination. Just step in and thank your life, whatever came together, that you have this time to, to create and use it. And even if it isn't what you wanted it to be, you thought it should be, you did it and it's enhancing you that you did it. So step up and, and just start and uh, let it flow and increase your happiness. And pretty soon that'll become a habit and you will never have to um, even worry about what am I going to write? What have I got to say? Is it going to be good enough? Will anybody else care? When you have the habit of accepting yourself and letting it flow, it will then lead you instead of you having to push it. And how to know when it's done is, a, is feeling and trusting yourself that you've done it. You've, you've, said you've set out to to communicate something and you did it you said it you painted it you made a piece of music you made an outfit whatever creative expression um you've got all the ingredients in that muffin and it's time to bake it it's you know trust yourself to know when 
it's ready to go in the oven or ready to be published and um, and go for it. And then uh, celebrate, you had the self-love to step up and do it. Um, so Bo, are you there? Hello there. Yes. Uh, so if there's any questions that came in, um, comments, I'd love to hear them. Absolutely. There are quite a few. So let's see. Um, so true. Completing is the most important part. Otherwise, no one else gets to benefit from your writing, said MMM. Thank you. Know. Thank you. I want to, one little personal anecdote. My father was um, brilliant and very creative. Uh, but he never finished anything. And that is uh, part of the reason I became uh, uh, clear that completing is, is necessary. Otherwise, it's um, self-indulgent and can be not, not necessarily a waste of time to begin things, but never finish them. But certainly it can't help anyone else. They can't enjoy it if we never finish it and share it with them. So I, I became, um, you know, instead of a procrastinator, a completer as watching that, you know, him start many things and, and not, ever share any of them with others so i'm back and so uh yeah um the loan nine one on youtube said i am impressed that you work in so many mediums why have you chosen to work in so many and which is your fave <sighs> Um, I work in many mediums because I just follow my instincts to, uh, keep creating and instead of waiting for the perfect time or the perfect materials, I use whatever I have available. And sometimes it's for jewelry making, sometimes it's used store clothing or things that people have donated to me that I get to stencil on. Sometimes it's like the holiday season uh, now gives me impetus to, to create from uh, things that are available to, to decorate for this gift giving season and bring it in the light. Um, so whatever I have available and I use whatever's available, whether um, I find cattails or reeds or stones or feathers or whatever it is that I come across or people donate um, as, a, uh, as a way to stretch my creativity to figure out a use for it. Um, Bodhi can testify and, and Two, after two more of these, I'm going to take you on a tour of the Emerald Lady and show you the things I've done. But I have this policy of I have the holiday season decor container and I just take things out and I don't know beforehand how I'm going to use them. I just keep going until I use all of them in a way that pleases me. And so every season, every year, it's a, it's a different display, which keeps me uh, from taking it for granted or not seeing it anymore. And it's also just fun creating with it because I never know what it's going to end up looking like. I just get to play with the materials in a different way. So whatever I have available. So What's my favorite medium is whatever I'm working on at the time, whether it's skate dancing, flute playing, writing, home decor, outfit making, jewelry making, dishes, whatever I'm working on at the time is my favorite because 
I feel very fortunate that I discovered stepping into the flow young in life and it's gotten me through a lot um, with my happiness and health intact uh, is because I step into the flow. So I'm totally in the moment and that's my favorite medium, whatever I'm working on. I have to say though, but you can be here, Bo, for this, because you are Bodhi the movie maker who asked me to work with him as a young adult and named us Mother Son Productions. And I have to say that I'm loving learning about, um, especially through these grants that have, have given me the impetus to get in front of the camera twice a week, uh, uh, movie making, which can combine all the other art forms. So. There's something enormously satisfying about that. And I'm every, every time I do one of these live streams or get in front of the camera for the other stuff, the, the other videos, the how to stencil, how to decorate your home, whatever, uh, I get a little more comfortable, a little more at ease about being me. And um, so, it's really greatly satisfying to combine all the mediums, including be spontaneous and just accept myself and speak what comes to my mind from my heart. That's the, that's the way to go. That's lovely. Well, uh, Tom Johnson asked a question on Facebook on your orchid stencil post today, would you consider taking on a private costume project or an art piece? Your work is superb, really. Well, thank you, Tom, and happy birthday. And Tom is the person in my life back in my 20s who, though nine people in one day suggested I teach, Tom is the one that gave me a way to begin so you are a dear and incredibly important person in my life. Uh, I guess you were directing adult education, director of adult, I don't know what your position was called, but you said, well, just start in adult education. So my first class I taught was a way to learn to dance for joy. Um, and it, then it turned into the school district hiring me and writing a curriculum, dancing into the arts, because I've always loved to mix the arts. So after saying all that, let me answer your question. I'd be delighted to hear about your project and help you any way I could. So, yes. Great. Well, we'll have to transcribe that and send it to him, uh, though he's probably listening right now. Uh, but that way we'll make sure he hears back from us. So let's see. Um, MMM said, love the stenciled outfit. Did you have to make any adjustments on the cut pressure or did you run your stencil through twice? Also, what paint are you using? Uh, I think I might've done the cricket cutter on that one. So maybe I can field that question yes. for you. Yeah. So, um, we keep the pressure at the default. We just make sure that there's a nice, sharp, fresh blade in there if it gets dull. And um, yeah, so we don't have, it, it automatically does the cutting multiple times depending on what material you use. And we cut those stencils on acetate with a medium depth blade and the pressure at normal. And then uh, you can answer what type of paint are you using? Um, I'm using on these uh, golden acrylic paints. Uh, golden is the brand and obviously they come this in all different colors and sometimes I mix them and sometimes they're the color in the container, but the golden acrylics I'm, I'm extremely happy with. They have a, um, the right viscosity to not run. Uh, they're, they're very, um, uh, I can't think of the word, uh, almost paste-like. 
so they're thick enough to stay right where you put them with the stencil brushes. But I have a number of videos uh, showing stenciling and talking about different ways to cut stencils and, and showing actually painting with them. So there's a lot of how-to uh, parts in the, in the videos that I've already got out there and I'll be keeping going and doing more. I love it. I have 300 designs now. So we only have a cup, the first couple up in SVGs, but we're going to keep getting them out there. So, and I'm going to have Patreon membership. So people who join as members will get every stencil instead of paying $3 a piece for them, which you can do now for the couple that are out there. But when we get a bunch out there, there'll be a membership program. And so the members will <clears throat> get a, a, a significant economic benefit by having all of them in their minimal membership fee. So there you go. Yeah. Go to the Creativity Show on YouTube. I have it on the screen right now. The Creativity Show. All right. Let me go to the other comments and questions. Uh, Doug Stevens on Facebook said, I love the orchid color on you. Beautiful. Oh, that was the last live stream. Thank you. And then Madeline said, do you write every day? How long? Well, um, whatever I'm into, I whether it's writing or painting, um, home decor, I, I do some every day, but I also like to mix it up. If I'm writing, it's at a computer. And so I like to get up every half hour for sure and do a little dance or do a little weights or take a walk or do some house cleaning or cooking or, or home decor so I don't sit too long and I also change my perspective. But when I start a project, I enjoy working on it, knowing that's when I'm gonna, my main brain energy is going to go into the next day. Uh, that day when I get up, that there's a peace and serenity that comes from knowing what my work is. So I actually have to um, tell myself to take time off. It's easy for me to work every day. I call myself chronically creative because it's such a joyous and peaceful place. Um, but I do uh, take some, sometimes it's one day every nine days. Sometimes it's a couple days. Um, it doesn't really happen regularly that uh, I take a day off. And sometimes, um, you know, I go to my computer. I have a document called Uncommon Sense that are one-liners that I'm going to publish at some point. So if one comes to me, I, I put it in there. So I pretty much never, um, not almost never have days where I don't do any, any creative. I don't. Um, yeah, but I don't have to force myself to get to it. I just, I look forward to it when I make a choice and this is what I, I'm going to, this project, I'm going to do it till I complete it. There's, um, a wonderful feeling of relaxation and, uh, that comes from knowing what my work is. It's one of the hard parts of being an independent and an artist is no one else is our boss most of the time. And so we have to be our own, set our own production schedule. So, but there's the benefit that comes from that is the peace of mind that, um, that can come the lightness of being knowing what we're going to work on. So it's easy for me to work every day uh, and hard for me to take time off, but that's because I love it. So delightful. Well then uh, I think I've got one more and 
I'll scour the other platforms while you answer it, but it might be the perfect wrap up, which is DB asked, what's the hardest part of writing and what's the best? Oh, the hardest part of writing. um, Well, because I wrote my real stories, some of them were painful to relive and when we're writing a, a memory um, we're, we are feeling it again um, and even if it's fiction if there's sadness difficulty violence abuse whatever in it um, we're feeling it uh, that's you know art is always comes from feelings and is an expression of feelings uh, so that can be hard, but the best part is feeling it is how feeling it is healing it. And the best part is knowing we have healed something that other human beings, it doesn't hurt anymore for us to read it or hear it or talk about it. And we're helping others heal their stuff. So healing ourselves and helping others heal is um, totally worth going through the hard part, which is feeling it in order to heal it. So there we go. Yeah, great. Well, if I missed any questions, I'll make sure to copy and paste them so that we have them for next week's live stream. So make sure to tune in same time. Well, next thir- our next one is Thursday at 11. Not, and right. then the last one in this series will be next Monday at 11. And then we'll start, um, we'll get, I think, three or four before Christmas uh, of holiday decor decorating. Um, so next one is Thursday at 11 and that'll be number 14. And, uh, then we have one more after that and, and we've completed this series and there will be 10 blog posts, um, out, uh, next week on these, 15 live streams. So, uh, I'm, you know, going to get that out to you so that it will be condensed, distilled down to, uh, the, the key points of how to choose a passion to work on and then promote it. And, uh, it'll be mostly based on writing, but it will apply to any sort of creative expression or passionate work doesn't have to be what we call art. It can be any, any productive project we want to do. The principles apply. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for helping me, Mr. Technically Facile. And, uh, and thank you for being here people and telling your friends uh greatest way to promote anything is word of mouth in my opinion uh one person who is trusted by the other is the best way to share things so i really appreciate it when you do share things and um thank you to the minnesota state arts board and national endowment for the arts for the opportunity to do these live streams the grant is um greatly appreciated. I really appreciate this community and this place in the world uh, for being so supportive of artists. And um, I really know that the world is better and healthier. And we have the more creativity, the more of us that speak up and share our unique perspective, the greater chances we have opportunities to address the serious issues in the world. And so uh, let us hear from you and 
let us see what you have to share. Everybody has something beautiful to share with the world and meaningful. So let's, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I hope this inspired some of you to step up and share your essence with the world. Fantastic. Well, I will uh, end this live stream and then we'll come out and end it on Instagram. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here. Bye, everybody. Stay safe, stay creative.